The Bears are hiring Matt Nagy, the Chiefs offensive coordinator, two days after he's eliminated. He will be hired as the Bears head coach. Moments ago, the Chicago Bears parted ways with Matt Nagy, let him go fired this morning. Well, it has finally happened. The wish the Chicago Bears have had since 2020 has been granted, and that is the Chicago Bears firing not only Matt Nagy, but Ryan Pace. <laughs> but how did this happen? How did an offensive genius in Matt Nagy manage to have the 26th best offense in the NFL? How did Matt Nagy go from being one of the best head coaches in 2018? How did this happen? How did he fail with four quarterbacks in Mickey Jabisky, Nick Foles, Andy Dalton, and Justin Fields? That is what we're going to discuss in today's video and how the McCaskies, Ted Phillips, can fix this, can learn from this mistake and hire the right head coach that will bring the Chicago Bears back to that championship level. But before we do that, make sure to go and smash that like button, subscribe if you like content like this, and hit bell notifications. And with that all being said, let's dive right into today's video. Now, if there was any game that could summarize Matt Nagy's tenure with the Chicago Bears, it was probably the Vikings game. In that game, we got to see all the things that made Matt Nagy fail as a head coach. And this was thanks to the football gods for blessing us with this amazing game to show the McCaskies that, hey, you need to fire this guy, Matt Nagy, and you need to make a change on how you hire head coaches. And in that game, Chicago Bears were hot and spicy like they were in 2018. But then things went on a downhill. Matt Nagy decided to pass it on fourth and one. He decided to stick with Andy Dalton, had multiple turnovers, stick with the wrong quarterback. And this game was just a mess as Chicago Bears had set up so hard with that defense playing well, with Dave Montgomery fighting and clawing and being that workhorse, and Andy Dalton even looking like a backup quarterback. But in Matt Nagy's typical fashion, he got way in his head, and that is what caused him to lose miserably to the Vikings. And to really, really understand Matt Nagy's downfall and the McCaskey's inability to find a good head coach and, you know, kind of their inability to do the right process, we need to discuss how Matt Nagy and the McCaskies found each other. Now, Matt Nagy was the Kansas City Chiefs play caller in 2017. And he eventually took over after the Chiefs had a losing streak. And he would help the Chiefs become four and one and he would help the Chiefs score 28.6 games in his time as a play caller for five games and then the Tennessee Titans game happened Matt Nagy would choke a 21 to 3 deficit against the Titans he would abandon the run and you know the Bears would see this would see what Matt Nagy did for the Chiefs and in typical fashion in them not hiring the red coach they would say hey we are good with this mediocrity you are good with this guy who doesn't know how to coach. Let's hire him. And when the Bears hired Matt Nagy in 2017, I'll admit I was hyped. I was excited because the media was hyping him up. The fans were hyping him up. This was supposed to be one of the best moves according to NFL.com. And we were all excited. And in 2018, rightfully so, that matched up. The Chicago Bears were able to get in guys in the building like Roquan Smith. James Daniels, Anthony Miller, Bilal Nichols able to keep Vic Fangio and they made one of the biggest moves still to this day, one of the biggest trades and brought in Khalil Mack. We expected big things from the Bears in 2018 and that certainly matched. 2018 was the best year in Matt Nagy's tenure as a Chicago Bear. The Bears went 12 and 4. They almost made the Super Bowl. They beat teams like the Seahawks on their pick six. They beat the Cardinals. And then they had one of the greatest performances against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where they put up six touchdowns. They had multiple turnovers in that game. The defense was amazing. They scored 24 points or more in 13 games. And they even put up 31 points against the New England Patriots and nearly beat them. Kevin White would have gotten to the end zone. And they scored 41 points against the Bills and 34 points against the Detroit Lions. 2018, the Chicago Bears would rank 20th in offensive DVOA, 21st in yards per game, and average 23 points per game, per game and were 9th in PPG. 
And based on this, the NFL gave the most prestigious award to Matt Nagy. They gave him coach of the year and Matt Nagy would be considered one of the best head coaches in the NFL. He would be considered the cream of the crop, the creme de la creme. And this was exciting. And even in that offseason, Matt Nagy vowed to fix that kicking position. He brought in a whole squad of kickers and made them all kick from the 43-yard line. And that seemed weird and unnecessary at the point, made us scratching our heads. But hey, we didn't care. We just thought, hey, kicking was just our only issue. Boy, were we wrong. And that first indication came against the Green Bay Packers in week one, where the offensive woos would show. Matt Nagy and his offense would manage to score only 13 points. And Matt Nagy, being the offensive genius he did, but for some odd reason, throwing over 53 times would be a great idea. And he would make Mitchell Jabisky throw 53 times. And Mitchell Jabisky would eventually throw one touchdown and have two interceptions. Yeah, not probably the best move, Matt Nagy. And as one can imagine, when your offense can't score, and when your offense is bad, you're probably not going to win a lot of games and find a lot of success. And that is exactly what happened. In 2019, the Chicago Bears went from scoring 23 points per game to scoring 17.5 points per game. They were 21st in the league per yards per game, and they were 5.7 yards per attempt, 32nd in the league. But hey, all that matters to George McCaskey and Ted Phillips is to be you, right? That's what matters at the end of the day, not win. Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you you win? Now, following the 2019 offseason, Chicago Bears would make some moves in the 2020 off. They would push the blame from Matt Nagy onto two people, Harry Highstead and Mark Cuban. But that main goal in 2020 was to help Mitchell Trubisky. The Chicago Bears decided to hire Bill Lazor, who had some success with Andy Dalton. And they started bringing Nick Foles as a competitor to Mitchell Trubisky to push him. And these moves for the Chicago Bears pretty much were disasters, to put it on. Honestly. That year, the Chicago Bears started Mitchell Trubisky for two games and then benched him during the Falcons game in the worst way possible, killing Mitchell Trubisky's confidence. And looking at Mitchell Trubisky in that press conference, my heart broke, everyone. I mean, Mitchell Trubisky was sad and the dude was devastated. And you know, Matt Nagy did not handle the benching of Mitchell Trubisky correctly. Then Matt Nagy put in Nick Foles. And in typical Nick Foles fashion, he comes in hot and then that dies down fast. And that is exactly what happened. The Bears flamed out with Nick Foles. And if it weren't for Nick Foles getting injured, the Chicago Bears probably would have started Nick Foles the whole year. And who knows how that could have been. We probably would have missed the playoffs. And Mitchell would go back in and help the Bears get into the playoff contention and would win the best award possible, Nickelodeon MV. P. But the Chicago Bears would lose to future Bears head coach Sean Payton. You see what I did there? Anyway, the Chicago Bears at that year would rank 26th in yards per game and 22nd in points per game. The play calling was bad. I mean, Matt Nagy had to give up play calling in the middle of the season. But, you know, even though all these bad things happened, that's not to say good things didn't happen. The Chicago Bears found a gem in Darnell Mooney. They found a gem in Jimmy Johnson. And 2020 really proved that David Montgomery was one of the best running backs in the NFL and that Aaron Robinson was elite and he was only going to get better within the league quarterback. The quarterback like Justin Fields who the Chicago Bears brought in in the 2020 one offseason. And that us was special. I mean, somehow we got Justin Fields. I don't know how to this day. We brought in some guys like Khalil Herbert, Kevin Jank, Larry Borum, and we brought in a good DC in Sean Desai. The only weak part of our offense was Sam Mustapher, and this would be a problem in 2021, as we all know. And even in the offseason, the signs to Matt Nagy's eventual downfall would show. I mean, first we had that really, really bad press conference that Ted Phillips say, hey, we have everything but the quarterback, everything else is in line, and the McCaskey saying, yeah, 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 we're good with Mayan Pace and Matt Nagy. Let's keep them. So we already had some signs of, hmm, maybe 2021 might not be the best. And that certainly proved itself. 2021, in the offseason, after dropping Justin Fields, Matt Nagy would refuse to make it a competition. And that would hurt the Chicago Bears in 2021. 
one. You know, Andy Dalton would start week one and he would eventually get injured in week two. Then Justin Fields came in with barely any reps with the first team and was decent against the Cincinnati Bengals going 6 for 13 um, throwing for about 60 yards. That next game, he was sacked nine times against the Cleveland Browns, but bounced back against the Detroit Lions, going 11 for 17. And against the Raiders, he had his very first touchdown. Against the Green Bay Packers, a very good defense. He went 16 for 27, had one touchdown. But then the issues came. He was really, really bad against the Buccaneers, and he had multiple turnovers. But in Justin Fields' typical fashion, he wouldn't let that hold him down, and he would bounce back against the 49ers and then have his coming out party against the Steelers going 17 for 29 for 209 yards and one touchdown and one pick. And this would be Justin Fields' best game as the Chicago Bears thus far because it really showed what Justin Fields brought to the table and what a new head coach needs to build upon. A new head coach cannot build upon what Justin Fields did in the Vikings game. They need to help Justin. They need to make Justin move in the pocket. They need to help Justin you know, find these open guys, let Justin throw it deep, and they need to bring in some better receivers who won't drop the ball. That is what a new head coach, that is what a new GM must do to help the Justin Fields. They must also play these young studs in Thomas Graham and Kevin Jenkins because they are our future. This does not need to be said. They cannot be running, passing it on fourth and one, or running screens, or running all these you know movements before the ball is snapped. They need to make the offense easy, and they need to make the offense game plan surround Justin Fields, not let their ego take over. Now, before we dive into this ego, let's continue to discuss Matt Nagy's really bad decision. The fact that Matt Nagy didn't start Kevin Jenkins after the Vikings where he defended his quarterback and then, you know, kind of a slap in the face of Sam Jermaine Defati as a captain. The fact that he decided to start a Fetty over Borum after Borum got COVID. The fact that he didn't start Justin from week one. Now, other than Matt Nagy's offensive progression and the decision, this next really bad habit is his ability not to adapt to his quarterbacks. He didn't adapt to Mich Mitchell Trubisky, you know, running that simplified offense, running that two-minute offense so that Mitchell Trubisky could read the field, and he certainly ended up with Justin Fields, a rookie quarterback, and made his offense way more complicated than he had to do. His ego would take over him, and after saying he gave up play calling, Manaki would say once again, yeah, I'm the play caller once again and this would just be really really bad for the Chicago Bears and you know all of this Matt Nagy's offensive progression his decisions his ego the ability to not game plan and adjust all factored into him failing as Chicago Bears head coach but where do Chicago Bears go from here? Where do McCaskies go from here? Because if you watch that press conference, it was not good. And what the McCaskies have to do is the exact opposite of what they said in the press conference. The exact opposite. Whatever they did in years past, they need to do the exact opposite. They have to go and hire a guy who is strong, a guy who is a veteran, or a guy who can bring the most to the table. Jim Harbaugh, Sean Payton. That's your tier one. That's the two guys that you have to go get. If you can't get them, you have to go and get some people like Kellen Moore, Greg Rowland, Nathaniel Hatchett, or Brian Dable. Legit anyone better than Matt Nagy. And you cannot go and hire Leslie Fraser. If you go and hire Leslie Fraser, McCaskey, you might have just moved to a high school football field because I'm telling you, no fans will show up if you hire someone like Leslie Fraser and probably be worse off with Messi Fraser than you were with Matt Neck. You have to find someone offensively minded. And if they're not offensively minded, a smart, young, defensive head coach. Someone like Brian Forrest. Or if the Raiders do fire their head coach, the Bears need to go and see if they can hire Rick Barrichera. He's another great coach at Chicago Bears High. Chicago Bears cannot, I cannot, I cannot emphasize this enough cannot go and hire someone old like Leslie Fraser. He is not who you need. You need someone young or you need someone who is offensively strong. Someone like Sean Payton, someone like Jim Harbaugh, someone who knows what they are doing. And that is how you will get back to your championship ways. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope you enjoyed my rise and fall of that naggy. And if you did, make sure to go and smash that like button. Make sure to subscribe. If you like content like this, hit bonifications. And with that all being said, bear down.